Praise the Lord, saints of the Most High God. Praise ye the Lord, saints of the Most High God. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. And to all of our online viewers, we want to say welcome. We want you to worship the Lord wherever you are. On behalf of our pastor, Suffragan Bishop Ron E. Stevens and First Lady, Lady Doretta D. Stevens, we want you to come one day and worship with us. We're located at 2741 Dayton Street in the heart of the city of St. Louis. And to all of our guests, friends, and visitors here in the sanctuary this morning, God bless you and welcome to Temple Church of Christ. Our order of service will be as follows. The reading of the announcements, immediately following the reading of the announcements, we will have prayer rendered from Evangelist Cynthia Washington. And right after prayer, we will hear from the beautiful voices of the music ministry. Amen. The announcements read as follows. The upcoming events for Sunday, June 12th, and all times are Central Standard Times. To help us update our TCOC membership records, we're conducting a census. We'll need your help. Please complete the form that you received this morning and give it to the hospitality team. They're wearing the red blazers. Bishop will have more information on this later. Join us for a Monday night prayer at 7 p.m. Every Monday night at 7 p.m. That's Central Standard Time. Also, join us for our weekly Sunday morning worship services, in person only at 9 a.m. and in person and online at 11 a.m. Don't forget Wednesday night Bible study. It takes place right here at Simple Church of Christ in person and online at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Join evangelist Cheryl Oliver and Minister Angela Pearson for the Victorious Living Teleconference, which takes place every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. You don't want to miss it. Join the Sisters of Anna for the walk, run, and chat. It takes place at Forest Park. All TCOC sisters are invited. That's Saturday, June 18th from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Meet at the Forest Park Boathouse. Contact Dr. Sandra Fields for more information on this fun event. The Men's Cafe is scheduled for June 18th. It has been moved to June 25th at 9.30 a.m. We are inviting all the men to come out and fellowship and attend breakfast on June 18th at Faith Miracle Temple Church. Please see the flyers for both of these events. Save the date for two Spirit Field upcoming Christian education events. It takes place on June 19th and the 24th here at TCOC. A special session on being filled with the Holy Spirit on Sunday, June 19th at 11 a.m. All young people ages 25 and under are invited to join the class to learn more about why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how to prepare to receive him, and tearing for the Holy Ghost will take place on Friday, June 24th at 7 p.m. Please join the TCOC Sisterhood Zoom meeting with the guest speaker of Sister Nidra Crisp as she discusses how do you guard your heart. That will take place on Tuesday, the 21st of June at 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Minister credentials, renewal payments are accepted during the console from July 5th to the 9th. Please reach out to Evangelist Cheryl Oliver for more information on this. Once again, that's minister credential payments are accepted from July 5th through the 9th. The Golden Girls Extravaganza has been moved from Sunday, July 24th to Sunday, July 17th at 3 p.m. Update your calendars. You don't want to miss it. Also, they're still accepting change for change throughout this entire year. TCOC is hosting its 11th annual community church-wide free health and back-to-school fair on Saturday, July 23rd from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. We will have free services for the community. Please spread the word. The free services are listed on the social media postings. We still need help with donations, school supplies that are being collected now through July 17th in the bin all the way at the rear end of the sanctuary. The list of supplies that are needed is listed on TCOC website, the app, and Facebook. 
For more information, please reach out to Sister Janine McQuarrie if you have any questions. Sign up now for the free manograms during the Missouri Baptist Medical Mobile Van. It will be here at TCOC with appointments starting at 9 a.m. Reach out to Sister Dorothy Humphrey Holmes or Tara Humphrey Holmes for more information. Join us as we read the book of Deuteronomy for the remaining month of June. Be sure to check the TCOC app under events for the corresponding chapters and dates. Once you have completed your reading, please click yes for that day. All of these announcements can be found on Facebook, the TCOC app, and the TCOC website. There are also sent Faith Teams text messages. Please check all modes of communication to ensure you have this information for upcoming events. And that is conclude the reading of the announcements. I now put the order of services into the hands of Evangelist Cynthia. Praise the Lord. We all stand. If it were not for the Lord who's on our side, where would we be? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humbly come before your throne of grace, thanking you, Lord, for the many blessings you've already bestowed upon us. Thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Thank you for being God all by yourself, Lord of Lords and your King of Kings. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're Jehovah Jireh. You're Elohim. You're El Shaddai. You're the Almighty God. Lord, and we thank you right now. Continue to bless the angels of this house. Continue to bless Temple Church of Christ. Look on the prayer list, Lord Jesus, and bless and heal and deliver and set free, Father God. We thank you right now. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. And if we had 10,000 hands, we couldn't praise you enough. Lord, we just thank you for who you are. And you said, whatever we ask in prayer, believe it, you said we will receive it. We thank you right now. Lord, help us to be above the glory line. Help us, Lord, to love you and keep you and keep us in your perfect will. These are all the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and keep clapping. Hallelujah. If the Lord done anything for you on this week, hallelujah. Come on and celebrate the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Hallelujah. Look on the other side. Hallelujah. Just look. Hallelujah. You still here. Hallelujah. And now, God, I Hallelujah. And we praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands along with the praise team. Hallelujah. As we lift and glorify his name. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord with me.
wonderful, wonderful counselor. He's excellent in his mercy. He's glorious in his goodness. Hallelujah. And we lift him up on this morning. Hallelujah. He's glorious. He's mighty. There is nobody like him. I searched all over and I couldn't find nobody. No matter how hard I tried to get some help for myself and I couldn't find nobody. But when I turned to the Lord, But when I turned to the Lord and I cried unto God and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fear. If he can do it for David, he can do it for me. For he is the same God today today and forevermore I wouldn't serve who wouldn't serve a God like this that will meet all of your needs hallelujah who will hear all of your cries All of your moans, all of your groans, nobody but God. Jesus. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, Jesus. We make a Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is. One more time, everybody. We make miracle work, promise keep light in Lord, the darkness. Jesus, thank My you, God. God, that is who you are. Come on, you're a way maker. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness.
testimony on this morning. Right in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I can't tell it like you can tell it. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keep. Right in the darkness, he doing my over. God, that and is over. who you are. Every time I turn around, he keeps when making a way. Every time I turn around, he keeps making a way. My God, that is who you are. Way make a way, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time. Your way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Oh, if he's a way maker. If he's a miracle worker, if he's a promise keeper, if he's light in darkness, I think you ought to worship him. Can we worship him? Let's give God the worship. We worship you. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Let's clap our hands if you know who he is. Amen. Oh, go and celebrate him. Oh, go ahead and celebrate him. He is. He is a way maker. Even when it seems like he's not working. He's a way maker. Even if there's no, you, you can't see God working a miracle in your life, he is a miracle worker. When you don't see the, the promises seem like they're not being fulfilled. He, he's working on his promises. He's a promise keeper, not a promise, not a promise breaker. He's a promise keeper. You may be in the dark right now, but he is light in the darkness. He's working when you don't even know that he's working. And it may seem like he's not working, but he's working. The Bible says he never sleeps nor slumbers. He works. He's working on your behalf. And your responsibility is to worship him because he's your God. Your, your responsibility is to glorify him. Your responsibility is to lift him up. Why don't you give God praise right now for his goodness and his mercy? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. And those of you on social media, we welcome you to the Temple Church of Christ. And those in our audience today in the sanctuary, we say to you, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We welcome you here today at Temple Church of Christ. Amen. We come out this morning to, to celebrate the Lord. I didn't come to get something. I came to give something. Well, I'm going to get out of the service. Well, I came to give something. I came to give my praise. I came to worship. I came to put some, some wood in the fire. I came to put some wood in the fire and to give him the glory and the praise that do, that's due his name. Being here on Sunday morning, I, I would not want to be any other place to be here in the house of the Lord. I had a choice this morning to stay in bed or to get up and go into the house of the Lord. It was an easy choice. I'm going to the house of the Lord. It, it, it's a choice. And I have chosen to be here today because I love him so much. And he deserves to be praised. 
He deserves to be worshipped. Worship is when something on the inside of you adores the God on the outside of you. Worship is when something on the inside of you bows down to the greatness of God. Worship is when something on the inside of you celebrates him for who he is. Worship is when you devote your time to him and say, this is your time. These are your hours. I give you this time. Worship is when you exalt him above your bills, your troubles, your issues. You exalt him and you make him so big, bigger than Goliath, bigger than the fiery furnace. That's what it means to worship. Worship means to forget about yourself and to concentrate on him. Worship means you glorifying God for his goodness and his mercy. Worship means there's something on the inside that says hallelujah to the king. Worship means to lift him up on the inside out. Worship means to magnify him. Worship is we're here today to give God the worship. The Bible says God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Can we give God the praise and the worship that's due his name? Amen. We worship him not because of just the things that he does, but we worship him because of who he is. He doesn't change. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I love him so much. You know, I come to church, I love the Lord. I love him so. Man, I appreciate him. That's why this is, this is my, my way to say thank you. I love him so much. And do you know why I love him? Because, as the scripture says, because he loved me. Because he first loved me. That was messed up, jacked up, confused. He loved me. So I'm so glad to be here today. God, thank you for one more time. Allow me to be in this house one more time. Time. I am so grateful. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Now, one of the psalmists says, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Can we clap our hands one more time for his goodness and mercy? Thank you. Thank you, praise team, for your ministry this morning. And, and thank you to our, our musicians and all who are in your respective places. Thank you so much for supporting our service today. We come here every Sunday morning to celebrate Jesus because of what he's done for me. And I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired. I'm not, I could have stayed home, watched TV, ran around doing errands. Ooh, I want to be here in the house of the Lord to give God worship. Amen. Amen. God bless you all again. Those on social media who are not in the sanctuary, we say praise the Lord to you this morning as well. Are we ready for the word this morning? Amen. This morning, I call your attention to the book of Exodus as it is found in chapter number 33. The book of Exodus chapter number 33. What a powerful text that we are, we are in, we're visiting today. The book of Exodus chapter number 33. Something happens in chapter number 32 Moses is on Mount Sinai and God is dictating to him the law Moses has been on this mountain for approximately 40 days fasting praying and, and God is speaking to him giving him clarity on the direction of the people of God. In order to establish a nation, three things are required. There must be people, there must be land, and there must be law. Law to govern the people and to give them the structure and order that they need. It is God who gives Moses instructions. And while Moses is on Mount Sinai receiving a word from the Lord, People become restless. They're saying things like, where's Moses? Where, where is our, 
our leader. He's been gone for nearly 20, 30, 40 days. I mean, close to 40 days. And they were restless because of the absence of their leader, Moses. And so the Israelites instructed Aaron, let us make a calf. And the people took off their earrings and jewelry and they took the gold and crafted and molded a, a calf. And they said, These, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. This is the God. Notice they take their, they take their earrings off, the chains, bling bling, and, and they melt it down and they make a calf. This is the calf that brought us out of Egypt. What, what, what an insult. It's a terrible thing when you don't know who brought you out of sin. It's a terrible thing when you don't realize that it's God who has delivered you. No wonder they were in so much trouble. They, they didn't recognize God was the way maker. God was the miracle worker. God was the promise keeper. God was the light in darkness. And somehow they missed. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's the calf. And so Moses comes down the hill. And he is upset. He takes the law, which is printed in stone. He breaks the law. He says, you stiff-necked people. How dare you? And God says, I'm going to kill them all. Because they're stiff-necked. And in chapter 33, it is Moses who begins to intercede. This great emancipator begins to intercede for the children, for the Israelites. And ask God, please save them, Lord. Don't kill us. Because if you kill us, we'll lose our testimony. We won't have the glory that you have designed for us to have. They'll say, you brought us out here just to kill us all. And God is so impressed with, with Moses. Say, dude, I like you. I like you. You are an intercessor. You are a man of faith. That takes us to our text. Chapter 33, it is Moses who's interceding. Chapter 34, Moses goes back up to Mount Sinai. And he writes the law a second time. Chapter 33, verse 17. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you. God was pleased with Moses. And I know you by name. Woo! I'm, Moses, I'm pleased with you. Oh, God, be pleased with me, God. Please be pleased with me, God. God, know me by my name. So I'm pleased with you. I, I like your style. I like your behavior. And I know your name. Talk to me. And so Moses began to talk to him. And Moses has a request. Then Moses said, show me your glory. You say you're pleased with me? You, saw you, you say you know my name? Show me your glory. Woo! I'm not asking for a chariot. I'm not asking for a ministry. I'm not asking for big houses and big homes. I want to see your glory. Show me your glory. You said I please you. You said you know my name. Show me your glory. Woo! God, what a request. Jesus, show me your glory. Notice how God responds. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name. The Lord in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, God says, but you cannot see my face. For no one can see me and live. You can't see my face. I'm God. I have no shape. I have no beginning. I'm omnipresent. I'm omniscient. I know everything. I'm omnipotent. I'm all powerful. I am God. You cannot see my face because when you look soft, I'm north. 
When you look west, I'm on the east. When you look up, I'm down. Uh, you cannot see my face because I am God. I have no shape. I have no form. I have no beginning. I have no end. I have no birth certificate. I am God. I have no origin. I have no daddy. I have no mother. I have no birth certificate. I'm God. There was none before me, none after me. I am God. I am creative of all things. I always exist, always will be. I am, but I am. I always will be. I am God. You can't pinpoint me. You can't say there I am because you're pointing one direction you miss because I'm behind you. I am God. Moses says, show me your glory. But I want to see your glory. What kind of request is that? I think today we can still ask God, God, show me your glory. Here's how the Lord responded as well. The Lord said, there's a place near me where you may stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cliff, in the rock, watch this, and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see the backside of my glory. And you will see my back, but my, but my face must not be seen. You can't see my face because I'm God. Now, this is metaphors. These are metaphors, but it's God is saying you can't see my face. I wouldn't, have, Brother Paul, if you stand me. Now, what God says, I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put you between the rock. I'm going to cover your face. So you can't see my face. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to step out. I'm going to step out. And you're not going to see my face. But God says, I'm going to step out. And I'm going to show you the backside of my glory. Oh, God. She's representing glory. And she's going through the door. And here's Moses. Now he can only see the backside of the glory of God. I have not seen the face of God, but I've seen the backside. You can, you can see my back. It's not time for you to see my face, but you can see my Oh, what can you do with the backside of the glory of God? If I can just see the backside, I think Moses is satisfied. If I can just see just a glimpse of his glory. So here Moses is between the rock. God says, I'm going to cover you up so you don't see my face. I remove my hand so you can see the, the backside, the backside of my glory. Thank you, sir. Oh, God. Woo! I am so happy. Oh God, that we live in the day where God says, I'm not gonna just show you my backside, but I'm gonna come and I'm gonna you're gonna see my face. You're gonna see me as I am. Oh God, there's power when you see the glory of God, even the backside of God's glory. There's a blessing, but there's a greater blessing when you see uh, the glory of God. So my message today is titled, Show Me Your Glory. Show me your glory. I want to see your glory. I want, I want to see what glory looks like, God. I've been through a lot of tests and trials. I'm in the midst of a crisis that people have created an idol. They're worshiping and they're stiff-necked people. They've turned their back against you. But I come to say, save them and show me your glory. Don't send them to hell, Lord. Deliver them. But I want to see your glory. Here is a man who's hungry for God. The Bible says, as a heart panic after the water brooks so panic my soul after thee i'm so thirsty for you i just want to get to know who you are show me your glory i don't want a cadillac i don't want a chariot i don't want a new house i don't want a new job i don't want a boyfriend i don't want a wife i don't want a husband i don't want a new house i don't want a new city i just want to see the glory of god i'm hungry to see the glory of god we have seen the glory of, 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 of Tiger Woods. And when we say Tiger Woods, his glory is golfing. And whenever you see glory, it has to do with his attributes and his abilities. And Tiger Woods comes up, his name comes up, and we say professional golfing. Or we see Michael Jordan, a phenomenal basketball player, a basketball player who since uh, retired, but he was one of the best of the best. But when we see his name, we, we see, we think of... Uh, 
power and excellence on the basketball court. We saw a Muhammad Ali and we saw him dance and uh, on, on, in the boxing ring and we saw him knock out great boxers and when we think of Muhammad Ali there are characteristics and attributes that come to mind and we say Muhammad Ali boxing or we see Serena Williams and we see her uh, there on the uh, tennis court and when we see her name it automatically triggers tennis or we see Barack Obama it automatically triggers a, a smart politician who becomes the first African American president if these names triggers attributes and characters and uh, but when I think of God there ought to be something that ought to trigger there ought to be something Something that raises uh, my mindset uh, to think about who he is he's awesome and powerful he's he's glorious he he's a healer he's a deliverer there's nothing too hard for him when I say his name there ought to be somebody says I want his autograph if I say Michael Jordan well I want his autograph you uh, I want a Tiger Woods I want his autograph or Michael Jackson I want his autograph people would say uh, but when it comes to this man named Jesus there ought to be someone who we ought to be so excited about who he is about his glory yes we see five levels of glory on this screen but there's nothing like the glory of God nothing like his glory well what is glory the glory of God is often referred to as a visible manifestation of God. It is a manifestation of God. It is God who is sh showing himself. It goes beyond theophany. Theophany is when God speaks through things. He speaks through objects. It is called theophany. But here God's glory exceeds theophany. God shows himself strong. The glory of God most often refers to a visible manifestation manifestation of God that is directly related to, oh God uh, to God's self disclosure and his intent to dwell among men this is why sinners can connect with a message like this but you got to connect with it because it's about God showing up it's about the manifestation of a living God who is prepared to deliver you and set you free the Old Testament word for glory is kabak uh, which is a primitive root meaning meaning heavy and here I have something in my head it's a weight and this word glory signifies weight or heavy it's the heaviness of the power of God is it's the weight of the power of God and so when you say worship and you say glory it has to do with the weight his weight and this is why they say that's a heavy brother uh, that Michael Jordan he was a heavy brother referring to his glory a uh, Tiger Woods he was a heavy he's a heavy brother a uh, Serena Williams uh, she's a heavy sister referring to the weight uh, well, the weight of their ability and attributes uh, ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters uh, the greatest thing we can do is get connected with the glory of God you want to break through in your life uh, God will do anything for his glory he says when you pray you pray for my glory I'll do anything that the father might be glorified give God a pray somebody <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this Moses says show me your glory in the midst of this crisis in the midst of this trial show me your glory it is interesting how God has already demonstrated his ability did I not did I not speak to you through a burning bush remember Moses when you were talking to the bush that was burning but Moses said, yeah I appreciate that but I want to see your glory uh, my, 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 did you not see your, your staff, your rod that converted into a serpent? Uh, yeah, that was great, God. But uh, Moses says, but I want to see your glory. Did you not put your hand in your jacket or your, jack, your, your coat and pull it out? It was a leprosy. You put it back in. The leprosy was removed. Yeah, I saw that, God. But I want to see your glory. Did you not see a cloud by day to direct you? You, and a fire by night to the yeah I saw that Lord but I want to see your glory did you not see manna from heaven did you not see water come out of a rock yeah I saw that but I want to see your glory oh God look a new house a new
new car, a new job. Lord, we give you thanks. But glory goes so much richer. I don't want to just see the cloud by night, or by day, or the fire by night. I want to see a visible manifestation of a God that I serve. Oh, God, God. I thank God for what he does. Thank God for the food on the table. Thank God for the doors he opened up. But I want to see the glory of God. Give God a hand and praise. Show me your oh, glory. If we're going to have a revival here in St. Louis City, somebody has got to get excited about the glory of God. I want the glory of God to be all in my life. And whenever you see me, I want you to see him. For in him we move and we live and we have our being. I want God to be on the inside of me. For if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. I want you to see Christ in me. It is this man Moses who, who was thirsty to know God. Show me your glory. Uh, well, I saw uh, the water turn to blood. Uh, I saw frogs uh, all in Egypt. Uh, you excluded Goshen. Uh, I saw the lice cover Egypt uh, and Goshen was not, not affected. Uh, I saw the flies. Uh, five, I saw the animal died of diseases in Egypt but not in Goshen. I saw the boils all over the Egyptians, but not in Goshen. I saw the hail in Egypt, but not in Goshen. I saw the locusts in Egypt, but not in, Go not in, not in, not in Goshen. I saw the darkness all over Egypt, but not in Goshen. I saw the death of the first and all in Egypt. Uh, isn't that enough? No. Uh, Moses is saying, no, no, no. Uh, I want to see your glory. Uh, the falls have come and gone. Uh, the lice have come and gone. Uh, the flies have come and gone. Uh, the hell has come and gone. Uh, the locust has come and gone. Uh, I want to see glory uh, that doesn't change. Uh, I want to see glory uh, that's already there. Uh, oh, so God says, oh, um, you you asked me for some heavy stuff. You asked me for some tough stuff. So look how God responds to Moses. He says, and the Lord says, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you. I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I have mercy upon whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. I can't show you my face, but I sure can show you my goodness. I cannot show you my face, but I do have a name. I can't show you my face, but I sure got some mercy for you. Oh, there you see the pyramid, this, uh, uh, this triangle. And there in the center of the triangle, there is an eye representing Moses. Says, I want to see your glory. And God is saying, look at my goodness. Because in my goodness, you will see my glory. In my goodness, in, in my name, you will see my glory. In my mercy, you will see my glory. It's all about uh, the glory of God. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, it is God who gives Moses uh, three responses. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, my goodness. Uh, uh, and in my goodness, uh, you're going to find my mercy. Uh, next slide. His glory uh, is uh, his goodness. Uh, I will cause my goodness uh, to pass in front of you. Wherever you go, I'm going to put my goodness in front of you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You want a miracle in your life? you got to let goodness go before you. Goodness that can deal with the demons and devils before you. The power of God's goodness can make ways out of no ways. I'm going to let my goodness pass in front of you. It's going to go before you and going to open up some doors. Oh God, show me your glory. I got to get some glory. I'm not looking for a Cadillac. I'm not looking for a house on the hill. I'm not looking for a big bed. 
bank account. Uh, but one of the things I need, uh, I need the glory of God. Uh, I'm fighting demons and devils. Um, I'm fighting spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, I'm fighting stuff that I don't know what I'm fighting. Uh, but one thing that would get me through the fight uh, is the glory of God. Uh, look, God will do anything uh, to get his glory. Uh, I'll do anything that so he can be glorified in your life. Uh, oh, not by might, not by power, uh, but by my spirit. Uh, I want you to walk in glory. Uh, so he says here, uh, I will cause my goodness uh, to pass in front of you. Uh, look what he says in Psalm 52 and 1. Uh, why boast uh, thou uh, thou self? Why boast thou thyself in mischief? Uh, why are you bragging about what uh, you doing? Uh, why are you talking about your ability? Uh, the goodness of God uh, endureth continually. Uh, stop talking about your ability uh, and give God the glory. Uh, whatever happens in your life, uh, point to God uh, and say, so God be the glory. Uh, your new car, your job, your healing, uh, uh, all that goodness, uh, it belongs to God. Uh, not to the idols, uh, not to people, places, or things, um, but all of the glory, it belongs to him. Uh, if you want God to open up a door, um, say, God, do it for your glory. Uh, you want your body to be healed? Uh, say, God, do it for your glory. Uh, you want a new promotion? You want something to happen in your life? Uh, Lord, do it for your glory. Uh, so I can tell folk uh, about your goodness. Uh, it's of the Lord's mercies. Woo. Oh God, when is the church going to get excited about God's glory? Psalm 73 and 1. Truly, God is good to Israel. He's good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. And those that are washed in the blood, those who have got the spirit, God's going to be good to you, just like to Israel. Every promise that Israel Israel has. Uh, you got the same promise. Uh, uh, you're not the tail, but you're the head. Uh, greater is he that is in you uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, you are a royal priesthood. Uh, you are a chosen generation. Uh, uh, God is with you. Uh, and if God be for you, uh, who can be against you? Uh, what you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about the goodness uh, of the Lord. Uh, the glory uh, is in his goodness. Uh, don't you worry about every anything but everything with prayer and supplication giving God the thanks not worry about anything don't worry about anything but everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request be made known unto him and the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind don't you know everything is working together for good to them that love the Lord Lord, and to them who are called according to his purpose. Everything you're going through, God says, I'm a youth for my glory. All your tests, all your trials, your ups and your downs, God is saying, I'm going to take your mess and turn it into a message and use it for my good. Don't wait till the battle is over. I think you want to shout now. Woo. Show me your glory. I want to see your glory not just a miracle I want to see the stuff that's behind the miracle what's, what's generating the miracle uh, there's a man named God so he says uh, I will proclaim my name because what's behind the power is my name he says I will proclaim my name the Lord uh, Jehovah in your presence show me your glory I'm going to give you a name show me your glory I'll give you a name. I'll give you a name above all names. There's no other name under heaven given unto men whereby we must be saved. I'm going to give you a name that'll make demons tremble. I'm going to give you a name that's going to open up some doors. I'm going to give you a name that'll bring healing and deliverance. Show me your glory. I'll give you a name. Well, Moses says, well, what is the name? I'll give you a name. Jehovah wrote high. I'll give you I'll be your shepherd. Show me your glory. Jehovah Rofi, I'll be your healer. Show me your glory. Jehovah Shalom, I'll be your peace. Show 
some of your glory. Jehovah Shema. The Lord is present. Show me your glory. Jehovah Tisikanu. The Lord, my righteousness. The one who makes me righteous. Show me your glory. Jehovah Ori. Lord, my light. Jehovah Usam. Lord, strength in trouble. Show me your glory. I'm going to give you a name. You better call on my name. In the midst of crises, making a false god, you got a bunch of stick stick neck people. You better open up your mouth and you better call on my name. Oh, let the redeem of the Lord say so. I will proclaim my name. The Lord in your presence. I'm in your presence. Anybody here going through something? God says I've given you a name. That's above every name. I've given you a name. You're going through a trial. you find a demon. you find the devil. God says I've given you a name. And in my name is my glory. In my name is my power. In my name is my attribute. Open up your mouth and say Jesus see me through. Woo. Show me your glory. I'll give you Jehovah. Show me your glory. Jehovah Bara, the Lord Creator. Jehovah Elon, the Lord Most High. Jehovah Jarrah, the Lord my provider. Jehovah my Kadesh, the Lord my sanctifier. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. I'm giving you a name. Show me your glory. Just call on my name. Show me your glory. Open the your mouth and declare that there's nobody like me. You called everybody else. You ought to seek me where I can be found and call upon me while I'm near. Oh God, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. The Lord will not despise. Open up your mouth and call on me. Woo. We got trouble. Stick, stiff neck people. They're hard headed. They're backslidden. But I want to see your glory. Woo. I'm not going to let that thing control my thoughts. I want to see your glory. I know I got trials and tribulations. I got a bunch of rebellious people. But I want to see your glory. Anybody going through some things right now? And you're looking at this and that. But the Bible says in Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. When are you going to get excited about the abilities and the attributes and the characteristics of his God? Oh, he's a mind regulator. He's a heart fixer. He's a psychiatrist. A psychologist. He's my best friend. Oh, ain't nobody like him. And that's why I got to give him the glory it is God who responds to him in three ways he says well it's going to be hard for me to show you my glory because I'm God but I'll show you the back side of my glory I'll show you a little something something about who I am yes I'll give you a little glimpse of my goodness a glimpse of my name and thirdly he says I want to show you some mercy I will have mercy on mercy on whom I have will have mercy. I know they have made a false idol. I know they have turned against everything that I have said. But I got some mercy for them. Ooh, I know they have fallen. Anybody ever slip up before since you've been saved? I know a few of y'all, you know a few of y'all have not, but some of y'all been saved and you have slipped up here and there. But it's always mercy because we're sin the bound. The Bible says grace much more. There's plenty of mercy and grace for you. For there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. When you get in Christ Jesus, he's a mind regulator, heart fixer, and he's got mercy for you. Don't you walk around with your head down, but you look unto the hills. From whence forth cometh your help. My help cometh from the Lord. He says, well, well, I cannot show you my face. But I sure can show you my goodness. I can give you a name that's above every name. And I can show you my mercy. Mercy is when you don't deserve.
deserve favor. When you, when you have messed up, mercy is when you are at fault and you deserve to be judged. And you deserve to be kicked out. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I often tell the story, and I'll tell it again. Uh, they had the police officers coming down to the elementary school to talk to the students. Uh, and one of the officers met Sam, my little Sam. He was about maybe, I don't know, 9 or 10, maybe 11. Uh, and Lady D and Sam were driving uh, down the street. Uh, Lady D was driving. Sam was in the car. And Lady D, D something happened with the police stopped. Her. I don't know if it was a, a stop sign or speeding. What was it? I don't know what it was. But the, but the police officer stopped Lady D uh, and says, ma'am, uh, you have broken a law here. Uh, and then the police looked in and saw Sam. Hey, hey, Sam. And Sam said, hey, officer. And there was a little nice conversation just for a few moments. And the police officer says, well, we'll let you go. But next time, make a full stop. Whatever it was. I think it was a full make a full stop the police officer gave uh lady d what i call mercy because lady d deserved a ticket didn't you she deserved a ticket but but the officer said no 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 we had that sam in there and because i know sam i'm gonna let lady d go oh god oh i'm so glad i know jesus because when i went across the red light and i was in violation there was somebody in the front seat his name was jesus and i didn't get my ticket to hell but he brought me out that's mercy mercy when you deserve the punishment but you don't get the punishment now if the officer had went into his back pocket and gave lady d fifty dollars that would have been grace is receiving something that you do not you did not earn you didn't earn it but you're gonna get fifty dollars that would be that would be grace mercy is when you deserve something but you don't get it grace when you don't deserve it, huh? but you're going to get some anyhow. Oh my God. It is in this context huh? when the children of Israel were messed up, huh? had violated God's law. Huh? He says, but my glory huh? is in my mercy. Huh? I should have killed you 10 years ago, huh? but it's of the Lord's mercy. Huh? Look at the Lamentations huh? and 322. I'm going to preach myself happy. Huh? Um, Lamentations 3 and 22. Huh? It's of the Lord's mercy. Uh, uh, that we are not consumed uh, because his compassions uh, oh look at enjoy that s uh, because his compassions uh, the plurality of his compassions uh, is blue red green and yellow and purple uh, whatever color baby i got compassion uh, no matter where you are what you're doing uh, i got compassion uh, it's of the lord's compassion uh, because the lord's compassions uh, fail not uh, ooh, watch this uh, but they are new Ooh, they are new you know I feel good every day because I got new mercies they are new every morning every morning I get up ooh, I got some new mercies the old mercies I put those in a box I got some brand new mercies they are new every morning how do you know because great is that faithfulness he's so faithful I got to turn my attention to a God who is merciful give God a praise somebody Woo. show me your glory God give us a church a generation of people that will say show me your glory in the midst of this conflict and confusion and a wicked stick nephew people a confused generation just show me your glory i've seen mess i've seen mass murders i've seen killing i've seen death i've seen political gridlock i've seen issues but i need to see your glory don't know who's gonna get shot from one hour to another hour driving down the highway don't know who's gonna shoot you but i just want to look at the glory of god just show me your glory i'm not gonna have a nervous his breakdown because I see the glory of God. Glory. God. Show me. I just want to see your glory. There's my back. It's just a shadow of things to come. It's not time.
time for, for me to reveal who, who my full my full character. The, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 8 and 5. Here Moses, God has given Moses concerning the construction of the tabernacle and all the things that go along with the law. It's only a shadow. Glory was a shadow of heavenly things in the Old Testament. It's just a shadow of things to come as supported by Hebrews 8 and 5. Who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see said he that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount ah uh, the priests it's just a shadow of things to come. The high priest is a shadow of things to come. The sacrifice, the altar, is a, a shadow of things to come. The holy place, the holy of holies, is just a shadow of things to come. The mercy seat is a shadow of things to come. The sacrifices is just a shadow of things to come. It is Moses who can only see a shadow of the glory of God. Woo! Oh, but thank God for Jesus. Oh, in the Old Testament, we just see shadows. But in the New Testament, we see we see the actual thing. It is my friend Johnny James. Uh, I had to pick this up. It just got in my spirit when I was studying. He talks about the shadow in the old and the reality in the new. Uh, from Dr. Johnny James, the walking Bible. He says in the Old Testament, Jesus is veiled. But in the New Testament, Jesus is unveiled. Uh, in the Old Testament, Jesus is wrapped. In the New Testament, Jesus is unwrapped. In the Old Testament, Jesus is the intimate Jesus. But in the New Testament, he's the ultimate Jesus. In the Old Testament, he's the innermost Jesus. The New Testament, he's the uttermost Jesus. The Old Testament, Jesus is contained. New Testament, Jesus is explained. Old Testament, Jesus is concealed. New Testament, Jesus is revealed. Old Testament, Jesus is indicated. New Testament, Jesus is illustrated. Old Testament, Jesus in pictures. New Testament, Jesus in person. Old Testament, Jesus in shadow. New Testament, Jesus in substance. Old Testament, Jesus in ritual. New Testament, Jesus in reality. Old Testament, Jesus in eternity. New Testament. Jesus paternity. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the shadow has become reality. John 1 and 4. It is now Moses who could not see the glory. But now we have a new opportunity. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Constant the mighty God the everlasting father and the prince of peace oh yes it is this man God who came as a word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God was the word and the Bible says and the word was made flesh Jehovah El Shaddai Adonai Elohim Jehovah Makadeh Jehovah Jehovah Shalom Jehovah Shammah and this God he was made flesh the God that had no shape the God that had no beginning the God that had no birth certificate the God that had no origin the God that was spirit that God was made flesh great is the mystery of godliness that this God was made flesh and the word was made flesh and the Bible says and the word Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Ooh, all of the God, all of the fullness of the Godhead body, everything about God it was in Jesus he was walking Jehovah walking Adonai Elohim the almighty God the everlasting father he was 100% man but he was 100% God he was God when he went out to be God 
and he was a man when he wanted to be a man. Oh, you got to watch him because sometimes he's operating out of his humanity. He's just a man. So he goes to the funeral of his friend Lazarus. He cries, oh my friend Jesus wept. He's operating in his humanity but then he turns around and says, hey, y'all don't know who I am. I am the resurrection. Where did you lay his body? He says, Lazarus come forth. Oh my God. On the ship and the water is the ship is rocking and there Jesus is on a pillow sleeping. He's exhausted because he's a man. I'm so tired. They woke him. They said, Jesus care not that we perish. Uh, Jesus says, let me step out uh, of my humanity uh, and let me put on uh, my divinity. He steps up, uh, looks at the storm uh, and says, peace uh, be still. Uh, and the disciple says, uh, what manner of man is this? Uh, but even the storms uh, and the winds obey him. Uh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, it is the glory of God uh, and the word uh, was made flesh him and dwelt among us. Watch this. And we beheld Ooh. what Moses was praying for. We got a chance to see it. What Moses God show us the glory. But when Jesus showed up, we beheld the glory, the glory as of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. Oh God, thank you for the glory. I'm coming against demons and devils because I got the glory. I'm coming in believing in healings because of his glory. When you see the glory of God, it elevates your faith. You don't run from demons or devils. You don't, you're not easily controlled or manipulated because I am. I'm covered by his glory. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Give God a praise, somebody. I'm wrapping up now. Show me. Show me your glory. I, I saw the miracles. But I want to see the glory. I saw your great hand. I saw you open up the Red Sea. And we walked through the Red Sea. And I looked back and saw all of the Egyptians drown. Oh my God. Oh, but I want to see your glory. Because that's over. That's historical now. It's in my, my book of wars. It's in my part of my testimony. But I want to know you more. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. I want to know you in a much richer way. Thank God for the testimonies. I, I want to know you. I want to know those new attributes. New characteristics. Thank God for my testimonies. Thank God for my stories. I want to get to know you. I want you to walk with me. I want you to comfort me. I want you to give me peace. I want, I want more joy. I don't want to get stuck, Lord. I don't want to get stuck, God. I know you called me to, do, to be this emancipator. I know we brought them out of Egypt, but I'm not satisfied. I want you to dwell in me, with me in a new way. Show me, show me your glory, Jesus. I know I won't be able to go into the promised land like the others. I know that I'm going to be here for a while, but I want, I want your glory. I want your glory more, more than anything else. God. Rest, rest on me. Moses came down the mountain. The Bible said his face glowed. He didn't even know it. His face glowed people frightened. He didn't know the glory was sitting on him. His face was just shining. He said, whoa, what's, what's going on here? I've been in the, in the presence of the Lord. I found a new peace. I found, I found his goodness. I got, I'm not where I used to be. A couple years ago, I found the rest. 
I've been interceding for y'all, but I'm in a whole, I'm in a whole other place now. I can pray about to Richard now. I'm in a brand new place. And, and when they saw, they saw his face, they, they took a cloth, a veil, and they covered his face. That's some people who got glory on you. And see, when you start bragging, you, you don't have glory. Yeah, I, I sing better than anybody up here. And tell me, I, I, I'm the best singer. I'm the best preacher up in this church. I, when you start talking like that, you, you don't see glory. Glory, it possesses you. And you don't know until somebody say, hey, you got a glow. You, you, you don't play your own horn. So man, you, you, you got a test, man. You are anointed. You have a testimony. He was glowing. I didn't even know he was glowing. That's what I want. God, let me glow. Let, let me shine that people can see the light. People can see there's something different and unique. Because the glory of God is all upon me. And they can see it. So you may not be able to see. You may, you're more valuable than you know. You are raw, your priesthood, and a chosen generation. And you don't see your glory. But don't grow weary and well doing for in due season. You'll reap if you faint not. So Moses come back down and he's glowing. He's got the, got the new tablets that have been rewritten. But he's glowing. Show me your glory, I'll put it on you. Show me my glory, I'll put it on the inside of you. I'll make you glow wherever you go. Folk on your job says something different about her. She just got a different, something, it's something unique about her. It's the glory of God. People, children, relatives see something unique about you because you're carrying that glow. I, I, I conclude. I, I pray for a, a desire for God's glory. Oh, we don't talk much about this, but it's something that we need to talk about, Pastor Stevens, the glory of God. The visible manifestation of God living in us. I conclude. His goodness. Next slide. His goodness seen in Christ. There could be no glory without Christ. His name in Christ. His name Jesus. His mercy. God is merciful, is in Christ. The glory of God then is in his goodness, it's in his name, it's in his mercy. So, so you lift your head up. You walk in confidence, man. Come on, lady. Lift your head up. God's going to take care of you. Everything working together for good. God's going to help you. He's going to walk with you. Just give him the glory that's due his name. Whatever you do in word and deed, do it for the glory of God, for his glory. That's the message today. That's the message. God, show us your glory, Jesus. Show it. Help us to see Jesus. When you see Jesus, God is showing his glory. When you fall more deeply in love with him, he becomes a part, an integral part of your soul, body, and spirit. He's showing you his glory. Everybody stand. Ready to be baptized? Come on. I'm calling for somebody to be baptized in Jesus' name. Will you come? Will you come? He wants to be glorified in your life. Will you come? The process is very simple. You repent. You turn. A desire to turn away from the world and make God your priority. This is Deborah Wilson. She texted me a couple of days ago. She said, I'm ready to be baptized, Pastor. I'm coming to be baptized. She said, I want everything that God has for me. I want it, Pastor. I said, Come on, sister, we're excited. Who else? Who else? I'm inviting you to give your life to Christ. It's the greatest thing that you can do is to give your life to Christ. Is there one? Anybody here not baptized in water in the wonderful name of Jesus, will you please come? 
Will you please come? Will you please come? You that have been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus, please come. Please come. Godly sorrowful. Lord, I want my life to be changed. Lord, I want a new life in you. Is there one person here today, you've not been baptized in water in the wonderful name of Jesus. I'm calm talking to you. Please come. She's going down in Jesus' name. And God's going to fill it with the Holy Ghost. She's going to get the Holy Ghost too. She's going to have a new prayer life, a new worship life. She's going to experience new glory. One young lady has responded to the call. Who else? I'm not asking you to join this church. Not now. I'm asking you to give your life to Christ. He will tell you where to go. Hopefully he may not here, but the first thing is give your life to Christ. Why? For his glory. For his glory. Not for your glory, for his glory. Is anybody here today? Anybody that's here today? Anybody want to return to the Lord? Somebody who's gotten away from the Lord, will you please come? Anybody who has gotten away from the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. He's merciful. There's nothing you can do that will make God stop loving you. Will you come? If you're already baptized and maybe you already feel you want to be a member of this church, please come. And these ministers will speak to you. Already baptized in Jesus' name, already filled with the Holy Spirit, please come. Already baptized in water, come. Already filled with the Holy Ghost, come. Want to be where you are. Thank you, ministers. Gotta be where you are. I want to be where you are. Want to be where? Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I've seen a lot of things, but I want to see your glory. Want to be where? I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I want to see your glory. Want to be where? Bless you. you may be seated. Amen. Just before we call on our deacons, I'd like to make two announcements, please. The first announcement is that we have a, a Temple Church of Christ 2022 census. We want to know who is a member of Temple Church of Christ. During this pandemic, uh, there's been a lot of changes. Phone numbers have changed. Some people have been promoted, got new houses, new phone numbers, new cell phone numbers, even new email addresses. And we are trying to update our database. And let me say that this information is confidential. Uh, the only information that's not is on our app, but this information, your address and things like that will not be shared with anyone in the congregation. We will, we will guard it. But I have a form here, and the ushers and hospitality members have a copy of the form. I was reading in the book of Numbers how the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt through the wilderness on the way to the promised land, and a census was conducted. They went tribe by tribe, counting, naming those individuals in each of the tribes. It's management and accountability. As a leader, it was important for Moses to do that, to govern the people and to ensure that needs are being met. As a pastor, my responsibility is to serve the people that God has given me. I got to know where you are, who you are. I got to know your address. I can get in contact with you if need be. So we're asking everyone, and the goal is 100% participation of our 
Temple Church of Christ census form. It's very simple. Just your name, address, telephone number, email address, and just a couple of boxes to check. It doesn't take more than four or five minutes to fill it out. And our hospitality committee and our ushers have uh, pencils and utensils that you can fill this form out with. Uh, the goal is to make sure that I can um, stay in contact with you and we can do a better job as a church to stay in contact with our members. If you desire to be a member, you can simply fill the form out and just indicate that I desire to be a member. So you may not have been a member. During the pandemic, our membership class was placed on hold. We put a lot of classes on hold. Uh, our fellowship classes, a lot of our classes were on hold. And so many people were saved during the pandemic in which we did not have a membership class because those were placed on hold during the pandemic. And we soon would like to resume those classes. But, by the, but we had lots of people baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit during the pandemic. I was at 50, 60 people. Sister Val has a number. I don't know if she's here at this point. But we had quite a few people baptized and filled during the pandemic. And what we have to do is make sure we keep up with those individuals as well as members of Temple Church of Christ. So please be a part of, be a part of this. This is a survey or census. If you fill it out, please, to with if you um, if you see someone in the vestibule, they will give you a copy of that. My second announcement is for next week on Father's Day. The God Squad, under the leadership of Sister Natasha Williams and Minister Andrew Williams, is going to be teaching on the Holy Spirit of the power of the Holy Ghost on next Sunday, targeting our, our young people. That's on next Sunday. That Friday, we're going to come to this church and we're going to lay hands on individuals and believe for the falling of the Holy Ghost. It'll be an opportunity for people to receive the Holy Ghost. If you are seeking the Holy Spirit and you want the Holy Spirit, we'll ask you to meet us also on Friday as well. We'll have a team of people who are prepared to pray with you to receive the Holy Ghost. There's only two reasons you don't receive the Holy Ghost. Sin or unbelief. You're not believing or the sin is in your life. If you repent and you believe in Jesus Christ, you can receive the Holy Ghost. I do believe the Holy Ghost is for everybody. Someone questioned me last week, is the Holy Ghost for everybody? Absolutely it is. Because we see it in the scriptures over and over again, and I do not believe that it has ceased. We see too many people being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's amazing how people can believe for new cars and houses and jobs and promotions and money and things. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, they put an exemption on that. Well, not the Holy Spirit, but God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. It's the best thing that ever happened to me when I received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It is a gift that God gives to everyone. Now, people often get confused, the gift of tongues with the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, that's for everybody. The gifts of the Holy Ghost has to do with the ministry, the gifting, the, the interpretation of tongues. It's quite different. But the Holy Ghost is for everybody. You simply have to believe and hate sinning. I don't like sinning. I believe that Jesus loves me, and he will give you the Holy Ghost. I'm so excited about Friday. I believe people will get the Holy Ghost all over the place. Amen? I believe that. So pre please pray for the God's God squad. I believe that we have prophets among us and priests. And we have, there's a lot that God, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive a gift. We have people in this congregation right now, you are gifted. You already have the Holy Ghost, but you have a gift that came along with the Holy Ghost. And God, and what you have to do is develop that gift, the gift of prophecy, preaching, teaching, writing, evangelizing, all kinds of ministry. You have a gift to work with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it's our, my prayer is that we'll also see the ministries that comes along with the gifts. Ella Williams is here now. Stand up, Ella Williams. This Ella Williams is here. His wife is not here. She was at the first service. Ella Williams is working with, she's downstairs. But he and his wife will be taking leadership. There, there's a team of people who will be working with him on Sunday. So if you have young people who are desirous to receive the Holy Ghost, have them to come to allow their faith to be built up on Sunday and to receive the Holy Ghost on Friday. Amen? Amen. And now I'll call our deacons to come and give us leadership. We have a baptism that we're going to witness 
uh, and I want to offer a benediction as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come in this house and to worship you and, and to hear the word. And I pray that this time has been a great in, investment of our time, God, and that the word of God will not return void and that you will give us a fresh appetite to know you in a richer way. I pray for your glory, that everything that we do for your glory, Jesus. Oh, God, strengthen us in the midst of crises and troubles and trials. Help us to focus on the glory, Jesus. Things are not going right, God. Help us to focus on the attributes and the characteristics of your character, God. I pray, Jesus. Now, Lord, strengthen us. Help us not to become professional church goers, going to church and going home, but never really growing. But I pray for supernatural growth. I pray for peace. I pray for rest. As someone who's frustrated right now, God, I pray, God, that your glory will sit upon them and let them glow from the inside out, God. Now, God, we give you thanks for this day. and Thanks for those who are on social media watching. Those in this congregation, we say thank you. We thank you for this opportunity that we can come into this place. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, we do, uh, we have a candidate who will be up just shortly. Renew. We're one.